Welcome to Hata Gastro. In today's video, we'll be speaking about a very interesting topic, and that is post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. And this is actually a sequel or a follow-up video to the video I made on the strep throat infections, because the post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis is actually a complication of either a strep throat infection or a strep skin infection. But without further ado, let's get started on this video on post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. So what is post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis? So if we break this down and look at each of the words separately, we see that post-streptococcal means that the disease is actually caused by a prior infection because now we are in a post-streptococcal stage and with a specific nephritogenic stain of a group A beta hemolytic streptococcus bacteria. So post-streptococcal means that the patient actually suffered a prior infection with a specific type of streptococcal bacteria, hence the name post-streptococcal. And if we take a closer look at the word glomerulonephritis, this is actually the inflammation of the tiny filters in the kidneys, which are called the glomeruli. So if we take a closer look at the anatomy of the kidney, we see that the nephron is actually the functional unit of the kidney, and this is actually what the glomeruli or the glomerulus singular form looks like. So the glomeruli actually remove the excess fluid, electrolytes and the waste from our bloodstream and pass it into the urine. So when we have a glomerulonephritis, we have the inflammation of these glomeruli and the nephron, hence the name glomerulonephritis, of the kidney. And therefore, all these functions that the glomeruli and nephron are actually involved in, such as the removal of excess fluid, electrolytes, and waste from our bloodstreams, will begin to deteriorate. But we'll explore those further as we go along in this video. So if we bring these two together, we get post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. So this is actually a kidney disease that develops about 10 to 14 days after a skin or throat infection with a specific group A beta hemolytic streptococcus bacteria. So in order for one to actually get post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, they will either first have to suffer a strep throat infection or a strep skin infection, which is called impetigo, with the specific group A beta hemolytic strain of streptococcus bacteria, and it's actually a nephritogenic strain. And this post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis disease is not caused by the bacteria itself, but by the body's infection-fighting immune system. So usually the dead bacteria, and in this case, the streptococci and antibodies will clear from the child's body without any problems. However, in post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, they become trapped in the filters of the kidney, which are called the glomerulus of the kidney or the glomeruli of the kidney. And this causes local inflammation within these glomeruli, which slows down the filters of the kidney, making it harder for them to make urine and to get rid of the waste. So from this definition of post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, we get that it's actually a disease that is predisposed by either a strep throat or a strep skin infection. And the disease itself is not actually caused by the specific bacteria, which is called the group A beta hemolytic streptococcus, but actually the body's immune response. So we have these antibodies, which actually help our body fight these initial infections, but in doing so, they actually get trapped within the glomerular and nephron system of the kidney and cause local inflammation there, and thereby decreasing the glomeruli and nephron ability to remove excess fluid, electrolytes, and waste from our body. So we'll see these patients will also suffer hematuria, which means blood in their urine, because if we have the inflammation of this glomerulus and nephron system, we're gonna have blood in our urine. These patients are also gonna have hypertension, and periorbital edema because we have a decreased ability to get rid of fluid in the body to make urine and to get rid of the waste so it's actually going to store in the body and cause pooling of water which causes hypertension and edema but as we go along we'll explore these further so now that we know what the basics of post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis is let's take a closer look at how one contracts this disease so as we mentioned in the slide before Post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis is caused by an initial infection with only certain strains of streptococci, designated as nephritogenic. And the offending organisms are virtually always a group A streptococcal infection. The signs and symptoms of this disease? 
So as I mentioned in the first slide, because we have the inflammation in this glomerular network and the nephron network, we're going to have the decreased ability for our body to concentrate as well as get rid of fluid in the body, which is in the form of urine. So if we have a decreased elimination of fluid, we're going to have an increased collection of this fluid in the body, which is called edema. So edema actually occurs in 75% of cases and is secondary to the retention of sodium in water. And it usually results within 5 to 10 days. However, in uncontrolled cases, it can develop anisaka, which actually means a more severe and generalized edema, as well as pulmonary edema. So hematuria is another thing that these patients can suffer from. And this actually occurs in up to 50% of cases. So here the urine has a dark colored appearance, as we can see in this picture here. And that basically means that we have blood, which is also now found in the urine. And gross hematuria, gross means something you can see with your eyes, usually disappears within three weeks, although it may reoccur following physical activity. And microscopic hematuria, which means hematuria that you can't actually see with your eyes or blood that you can't actually see that is visible in the urine, may persist up to six months. However, in some patients, it can persist up to a year. So hypertension also can occur in these patients and occurs in up to 90% of cases and can be of variable degrees. So blood pressure usually normalizes within three weeks, although it can remain elevated for up to six to eight weeks. And severe hypertension crisis can be associated with PRESS or posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome. These patients will also have a decreased GFR. So depending on the degree of inflammation, we will have varying degrees of the glomerular filtration rate, which can occur with a rise in serum creatinine. However, patients with post-streptococcal glomerular nephritis will rarely require dialysis. So the glomerular filtration rate is actually the assessment of the kidney function and is a test that is used to check how well our kidneys are actually functioning or working. So if this glomerulus is inflamed and we have a decrease in its ability to work, we're going to see a decreased GFR in these patients as well. So something that I didn't actually put in the slide but is worth mentioning is that because this disease is actually predisposed by either a strep throat infection or a strep skin infection, the patient will also come with a history of those specific signs and symptoms. So in the strep throat, we will have those enlarged lymph nodes, the redness in the mouth, the inflamed tongue, the uvula, the oropharynx, which is red and inflamed, which could be important in the history of this disease. So as we can see here, and in patients who complained of a previous or recent strep skin infection, they will describe having this bright red or bumpy rash that spread either all over their body, particularly around the mouth area. And it often looks like a bad sunburn with fine bumps that may be rough to the feel like sandpaper. And it can also be very itchy. So that's something to keep in mind in the history of these patients. So moving on, let's explore the diagnosis in this disease. So the lab tests will show a normal cytic normal chromic anemia, and there will be possibly elevated blood urea nitrogen levels as well as creatinine, but this is often transient. We will also have an increased anti-streptolysine O titer. So this is that specific antibody that is particularly raised following a streptococcal infection of the pharynx, so a strep throat infection. So if these patients had a prior strep throat infections, we will see elevated levels of ASO titers. We can also find an increased anti-DNA ACE B antibody titer, and this is particularly seen in patients who had a prior streptococcal infection of the soft tissue, so the skin infection. There will also be a decrease in the C3 complement, and if we take a closer look at the urine of these patients, the urine analysis can show nephritic sediments, such as hematuria, so the blood in the urine, as well as red blood cell casts and mild protein urea, which means proteins in the urine. The ultrasound exam will show enlarged kidneys and a renal biopsy can be done, but is not usually performed in most cases. And finally, let's talk about the treatment in post-streptococcal glomerular nephritis. So in most cases, the disease is self-limiting and only supportive treatment focused on the complications of volume overload is necessary. 
So here the doctor will monitor the electrolytes, renal function parameters and the blood pressure of these patients. The edema is treated with a low sodium and low protein diet or even the administration of loop diuretics. For the hypertension in these patients, we can use ACE inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers or even calcium channel blockers. If the patients have a persisting streptococcal infection, an antibiotic can be administered and this is usually done with penicillin G benzathine. And in more severe cases or course of this disease, we can also use glucocorticoids to treat that inflammatory process and in very severe forms of the disease, we can use dialysis temporarily. And that brings us to the end of this video on post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. And please make sure to turn on your bell notifications so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. If you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.